Hey everyone, an idea that has fascinated me for a very long time is trying to play as many games as possible with Arcade Stick. I feel like in an ideal world it would somehow be possible for me to play all my favorite games on Arcade Stick exclusively. And so, of course I've been a long time player of Arcade Stick up to almost 10 years now which is pretty crazy. With shmups, with fighting games, with 2D games like Super Metroid, Mega Man X, Super Mario Bros, all that good stuff. Basically anything that would allow me to use an arcade stick as the primary method of control, anything that has digital inputs, I'm going to use arcade stick with. However, I've gotten to the point where I've also begun to even try and use arcade stick with games that don't support digital controls. So stuff like Goldmine 007 or Resident Evil 4. And while those games kind of work because they only need one analog stick, it's still not really that good of a replacement, obviously, because you're not having true digital control and you can't get those really fine movements and stuff like that like you could on an analog stick. And so I've actually been aware of this particular product for a, an, over a year, year now, maybe even longer, which is the Ultramark 2 360 stick. And I think the only reason why I didn't buy it was <clears throat> one, the price was a little high. And two, also just the website always seems kind of like one of those mom, mom and pop shop type websites, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I just was too lazy basically to engage with it and to order it. You know, the motivation wasn't quite there. But as of late, I've been wanting to get into using um, Analog Stick a little bit more for stuff like Sin and Punishment, Star Fox, basically more rail shooters. Maybe even look into emulating light gun games and seeing how that works. And so I wanted to check this thing out and I also was curious because I think about last year, maybe a little longer, I have been aware of this Kickstarter for an analog arcade stick for Super Smash Bros specifically. Um, in case you guys don't know, I am a Smash Bros Melee player for a very long time. Um, it is my favorite fighting game and I, I play competitively and all that stuff. And of course, it seems like, okay, if there's one person on Earth who would be interested in this product, it is me, right? Because I love and I love Arcade Stick, and I love Melee. You know, can we bring those two together? And I also wanted to see if I could use this for other stuff outside of just Melee, though. So, this video is going to cover, I think, more uses of the stick beyond just Melee. But I'm also going to touch upon that, because I think some people will be really interested in hearing about that. So to begin, I'll just get my thoughts on using this analog arcade stick out of the box, how it is, just on its default settings, and then I'll talk a little bit about using it with different games and setting it up. So the thing about this arcade stick is it's kind of a little bit weird to get set up because you either can buy these extra cables and make it into its own little six button arcade stick. Problem is six buttons, that's way too limited, right? You need so if it's six buttons, start, select, and home, that's taking away three. So then you've only got three buttons. Or you can play with six regular buttons and have to bind, start, select, home to other things. Or you know what I mean? Like there's just not enough buttons with six. So the other way you can do it is you can have it be its own little standalone unit and then pair it with an arcade stick PCB in like some weird ways, which is what I ended up doing. So you see in the video, where I show two USB uh, cords. In order to get this work, you basically have to plug in two different inputs. So one input is just the analog arcade stick itself. And then the other input is the rest of your arcade stick, right? Your, your buttons and your start selecting the home and all that. The thing about it is, I think there are, this is basically a PC only peripheral at the time. I'm sure there are ways to get this working on consoles and stuff like that. I am sure of it. But for the most part, just consider this a PC only thing. And as far as getting it to work with traditional PC games like stuff on Steam and all that sort of thing, I'm sure you can probably figure out a way with Steam, with Steam's little control config stuff or VJoy. I tried to use VJoy. It wasn't working for me. So what I ended up doing is I ended up just binding the two separate inputs in the emulator. And most emulators seem to support this. So with Dolphin, you have to do a little bit of um, advanced configging, but you can do it in Dolphin. So you bind the arcade stick to the control, and just the control stick and then the rest of the button. And also in RetroArch, it's no problem. It'll do that for you. 
most emulators will support you doing this, so it's not that much of an issue. But once you get it up and running, what is my what are my thoughts just on the default setup? Well, I think it is a little bit of a shame that it is a spring-based arcade stick, because I think when it comes to an analog arcade stick, a Korean-style uh, rubber grommet would be much more fitting because springs are much more I think suited to digital controls where they're on or they're off they're snapping you know on and off on and off they have that snap to them whereas a grommet has that more natural tension right and so it'd make more sense for an arcade stick or for an analog stick where you know the, the closer you are you know the less resistance the further you out you get the more resistance it that feels like a much more natural fit and I think it's more akin to what the resistance systems on actual analog sticks on controllers are. So that is a shame, but I also know that springs are the most common and most widely used uh, tension system, so I'm not going to hold it against it for that. I was looking into perhaps modding it to use rubber grommets, which I'm sure is possible, but I'm not confident enough to do that because I think I would end up ruining the thing and it's you know it's pretty pricey maybe someday I'll get get up the nerves to do it so the second thing I want to comment on with just sort of the out of the box thing is that you definitely when you plug it in for the first time you must um, what is it not configure it or whatever it is you need to calibrate it that's what it is you need to calibrate it in PCs because mine always seems to have a little bit of a natural drift to it where it's like a little bit to the right a little bit to the left so what you need to do is you need to plug it in, hit enter, circle around slowly, hit enter, hit enter, and you need to keep doing this until you get it dead center automatically, right? Otherwise you're going to be in for a world of trouble if you have that drift on it. So that's the first thing you need to do. Another thing that I ended up doing, and you can see in the video here, is that I ended up doing a little bit of a mod, because you know I've always got to do a little bit of a mod when it comes to arcade sticks. Where I feel like the throw on this stick, even if it is an analog stick, is much too wide and much too long. And even if you look at it electronically, it overthrows. There's really no reason for the throw to be as long as it is. And so there's different ways you can sort of adjust this. But my uh, sort of the ghetto way of doing it, I suppose, or the quick way of doing it, because I don't currently have a 3D printer and you know there's all kinds of equipment you need to do this but basically what I ended up doing is I just got a piece of I just got electric tape and down on the base there I just wrapped it and all I was doing and then you need to make sure to center it in your arcade stick uh, little hole in the arcade stick itself very carefully so it's dead center that way that little uh, the extra electric tape you put around it just acts as like a gate basically so it cuts down on the length of the throw I think it makes the arcade stick much more playable it feels better basically because I think it's a little overthrown you just on default so that's my little recommendation you don't necessarily have to do that but I think it feels better if you do that so outside of that there's some really interesting things about this arcade stick and I guess I should also comment on its uses for melee because I think that's probably the footage that's been playing for a bit here so I'll get to that and then I'll get to its usage and other stuff so using it with melee specifically I think that it is likely the Kickstarter is going to be using this arcade stick or a very similar one, you know, the Ultramark 2. And the problem with it is I spent many, many hours configuring and honing the, this thing in to be perfectly dialed in as much as possible. And I think I got it pretty damn close. The big issue that you're going to run into with this though, just by the nature of it, is that when it comes to dash dancing, that's where this thing really falls apart because it's not fast enough in going left to right, left to right, left to right. It drifts a little too long. It takes a little bit too much time to go from left to right, left to right. So you're going to have really, really inconsistent dash dancing and changes of direction. It's really good, and this is just kind of interesting, it's really, really good at minute inputs. So like getting perfect up tilts you'll do that really well on this thing because you know there's a lot more play there whereas on the GameCube controller you know it's just this tiny little degree but the thing about the GameCube controller is that it has a gate so it cuts down on the throw in itself and it's also just a much smaller distance your hand needs to travel in order to get these like changes of directions and shit like that 
So I think that using this to play melee, unless the Kickstarter does some really cool uh, modifications to the stick to make it like really snappy or to make it somehow really much more quick and responsive than the stock, um, I don't think this is going to be very useful for melee. I think if you're an ultimate player, it could be pretty useful because ultimate doesn't have complex controls. It doesn't have dash dan like really tight dash dancing and stuff like that. It's much there's all the bu all the buffering and stuff. So it probably would work pretty well for ultimate, but I'm not an ultimate player, so I wouldn't wouldn't really know. But as far as melee, um, the the problem you're gonna have in melee is one, again the stick itself just is a little bit too slow to get all of those melee crispy movements fast enough. Another issue is that um, you're also going to have to relearn all your inputs on an arcade stick, which sounds like, okay, that's not that big of a deal, but it's actually extremely difficult. And I kind of know this because I'm very good on arcade stick naturally. And so I could play Guilty Gear on a pad and an arcade stick. I could instantly pretty much switch over to playing it on arcade stick. Same, even with 3D games like Tekken, Virtua Fighter, Dead or Alive. I played those on pad originally. I swapped over to arcade stick in a matter of a day or two, no problem. However, playing melee on arcade stick is extremely difficult to transition, even if you were, even if it was working perfectly with the control stick, just because you have to relearn all those timings for your wave dashes, your, it kind of, it is good though, because it kind of shows how complex mechanically melee is. Everyone thinks melee is a very simple game. Mm-mm, bro. Mm-mm. It's much more complicated than um, most uh, most other fighting games. I would say it's actually a lot more complicated than most other fighting games on the input. So if you took all those inputs from the game controller and mapped them to an arcade stick, you, you get what the box looks like. You know, Hax's box. Why does it look so insane? That's because he has to do all this shit to just try and even approximate the stuff you can do on the GameCube controller, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. Um, and I think that's another reason why the hitbox and stuff, the smash box, really hasn't picked up as much because it's much, much more technical to pull it off on like a hitbox style controller than it is to play Street Fighter on a hitbox or something like that. It's extremely technical to do that. So, I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's very, very technical. So, unless you have, unless this uh, Kickstarter shows some really specific promise with how they're going to get the control stick specifically really nice and clean and hit those dash dances really well and all that sort of stuff um it's probably more i think appropriate to use to play with ultimate rather than melee so that's my review with using it for melee i won't be using it with melee but i definitely will be using it with resident evil 4 with Dead to rights, basically any game I can get away with using it with, that's like a rail shooter, a, th a third person shooter, stuff like that. This thing really, really shines there. Um, again, I'm very good on arcade stick naturally already to begin with, but I was playing this on Resident Evil, I was playing Resident Evil 4, playing some Metroid Prime, all that sort of stuff. It's actually, it feels really cool to have that analog movement and stuff like that. And it does work really well, especially if you get that throw nice and modded um, yeah keep an eye out because I'm gonna be using it in stuff coming up like sin and punishment um, yeah I think overall it's a very well made thing it it's a little bit weird as far as getting it set up and then there's also one last thing about it that I want to comment on before I let the rest of the footage play out which is setting it up to use with digital games so the weird thing a cool thing about this thing is that you have it has this program here I'll have to show an image um, it has this program thing where you can map how it converts the analog to digital and you can actually create custom maps and then use it for playing digital games and um, it's actually really cool it's a little bit hard to describe but basically you can put in different directions for different areas of the analog zone and it, it creates kind of a virtual gate for this thing and it's really cool. Um, I actually like it quite a bit. It's not nearly as good as like a nice Korean stick or anything like that as far as... Or um, a Saimitsu LS32 or something like that as far as actually playing shmups and stuff. But it's still actually really good. Um, 
And the thing about it is the arcade stick is basically silent. So I'd say if you were looking into maybe getting a silent arcade stick, which was something I was interested in the past, this might be the way to go, to be honest. Um, it has a little bit of a different feel than playing an arcade stick, but at the same time, you can get accurate inputs and stuff like that. I was using it in Donopachi. It's pretty fun. Um, I'm, I might have to do a stream in a little while coming up in the future where I play on my analog arcade stick playing uh, shmups and stuff, but... Yeah, and if in the future they ever release shmups, like a twin stick shooter, for instance, like um, Enter the Gungeon or something like that, this would be really good for that. You could move... You could have your movement buttons on like your regular buttons on your arcade stick, kind of like a WASD on your arcade stick, which I did for Gold Knight. And then you could uh, use your left stick, you know, your analog arcade stick, as basically your right stick for your aiming. I'll have to do that as well. I think it could work really well to kind of get a nice little replacement from having to play on pad. So I think this would also be a really good investment if you're interested in using it for twin stick shooters and things like that. So overall, I think it's very well made, very well done. The The analog input ma mapper is very good. However, it is a little bit complicated to get set up, I'm not going to lie, and it's basically limited at this point to using it on PC. I'm sure there's all kinds of fun shenanigans you could do to get it to working on a console, but for the, I'd consider it out of the box much more of a PC release, and you're going to have to tweak the settings and the emulators and stuff. And I'm not sure how to get it set up for your computer to view it as one controller, but I am sure there is some kind of jank way to do that. Uh, VJoy was something I was researching and saw online. I tried to get that to work, but I mean, the interface on that thing is really bad and really confusing. It's like, it's not very well set up. So hopefully someone has another sort of alternative to that. I also tried to use Anti-Micro to map it as a mouse. That kind of works, but it's not really all that accurate and stuff. But you could also give that a try as far as if you're trying to set it up to work with PC games and things like that like a Steam PC game. So yeah, that's my review. And let me finish by showing or by thanking my patrons. So thank you to Dingo, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Brian Shiver, Corio, Dunpeel2064, EC2151, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Smupper, Gus, Retro Schmupper, Gus, Kiwi, Joe Angelo, John, Game Boy Guru, K, Quentin, Malaise, Mark Sloan, Martin Worrell, Maz, Meher Kalendrian, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Okla Kugels, Harlar, Point Blank STG, Rhysosis, Smacky Factor, Sagumo, Churupon, Young Many Sweet, Plasmo, and Yuzakaya. Thanks for watching.